Yeah, so far uh, we have discussed about uh, BPSK, uh, then uh, UPSK, OQPSK, QAM, right? And uh, yesterday we have discussed about binary frequency shift key. Okay, these are all uh, modulation techniques which requires uh, coherent detection. Okay, right? So means uh, they need uh, the transmitter and receiver. The carrier phase need to be synchronized. But uh, in many practical situations where uh, the strict phase synchronization is not possible, okay? in uh, those situations we need to go for non-coherent reception. Okay, so basically there are uh, two uh, broad categories of. Uh, uh, non coherent reception. One is non coherent detection of binary FSK, and another one is a differential phase shift key. So, we are concentrating on these two topics today. So, let me see what uh, and how the non coherent detection of binary frequency shift keying is done. Okay. Uh, I hope uh, the screen is clear, right? Yes. Uh, so, as I said, the binary frequency shift keying can be, means the modulated signal can be written as for symbol one, I say that is S1 of T, which is equal to root of 2EB by TB cos of 2 pi upon T. Then symbol zero, right? The modulated signal will be root of 2EB by TB cos of 2 pi of 2T means symbol one i am transmitting with one carrier frequency which is uh, cos 2 pi of 1t and symbol zero i am transmitting with another carrier frequency uh, that is cos 2 pi of 2t right so symbol one and zero are transmitted with two different carrier frequencies that is what the binary frequency shift keying is okay so the non-coherent receiver for the detection of binary frequency shift keying signal so this is the block diagram of the non coherent receiver so here the received signal means x of t will be passed through uh, two matched filters okay see the upper path i have one matched filter which is matched to cos 2 pi of 1t okay over the interval 0 to 2b that is the upper path, this one filter. And the lower path filter is matched to cos of 2 pi of 2t over the interval 0 to 2b. So already we have discussed what the matched filter is, isn't it? Uh, I said, uh, I think in the previous classes, uh, the correlator, right? That is multiplier followed by an integrator is a correlator that will be replaced by the matched filter, right? Isn't it? So I am using here matched filter, and each filter is uh, matched to one of the carrier frequencies. Right? I said uh, the upper path is uh, upper path filter is matched to the frequency f1, and the lower path filter is matched to the frequency f2. And output of that is given to the envelope detector. So I hope you are aware of what envelope detector is. Right, and which is one of the simple detector circuit which is used in the AM receiver also. Right, so it is just one diode will be there, then a low pass filter. Right, so output of that master filter is given to the envelope detector. Then output of envelope detector is sampled at T equal to TB. Okay, so those sampling outputs are uh, called L1 and L2. Okay, for upper path, I am uh, denoting it as L1. And for lower path, I'm denoting it as L2. Okay, that will be compared. Okay, that will be compared uh, by using the comparison device. Right. So the decision will be taken in favor of symbol one when L1 is greater than L2. Okay, and the decision will be taken in favor of symbol zero when L1 is less than L2. So this is how the non-coherent receiver works. Means here I don't use uh, correlator and which requires the carrier to be used right i need to synchronize the phase of that carrier with respect to the transmitter so that is avoided here okay 
so by using the master filter this is how it works i hope this diagram is clear i think hello yes sir yeah i think you could uh, note down this diagram na i said uh, the received signal x of t which is equal to what s of t plus noise right here it is fsk that will be applied to the master filter so i am using two master filters one in the upper path another one in the lower path so upper path master filter is matched to the carrier frequency f1 and the lower path master filter is matched to the frequency f2 then output of that master filter is given to the envelope detector okay the output of that envelope detector is sampled at t equal to tb so those sample values i am treating it as denoting it as l1 and l2 so the value of those two will be compared and the decision will be taken whether the received symbol is 1 or 0 so if l1 is greater than l2 the decision will be taken in favor of symbol 1 i said and if l1 is less than l2 then the decision will be taken in favor of symbol 0 in case if l1 is equal to l2 then uh, the receiver will take a random decision uh, about uh, the symbol 0 or 1 okay so this is how uh, the non coherent receiver works for uh, bfsk signal then the average probability of error okay, for this non coherent binary frequency keying is given as pe is equal to 1 by 2 e power of minus eb by 2 n naught this is the expression for average probability of symbol error so where eb is the bit energy and n naught is the uh, noise per second density so they will ask simple question on this they will give the bit energy they will give what is the power spectral density of the noise and they will ask you to calculate what is the average probability of symbol error for this modulation technique that is non coherent bfsk i think you can use this formula and straight away you can find out so, so this is about uh, non coherent bfsk the next one is uh, differential phase shift key okay so we have already discussed about psk that is a phase shift keying so the non coherent version of bpsk is the dpsk what i can say <coughs> so <coughs> right so what we do in bpsk uh, symbol 1 will be transmitted with one uh, phase of the carrier and symbol 0 will be transmitted with another phase of the carrier right one may be with uh, 0 degree phase shift another one may be with 180 degree phase shift right so what is this uh, differential phase shift key in what way it is different from dpsk so here we are uh, means by doing this differential encoding of the input binary sequence so it is possible to eliminate the phase synchronization which is required at the uh, between the transmitter and the receiver okay so in case of differential phase shift keying it uses the differential encoding of the input binary sequence so let us see what it is what is that uh, differential encoding okay so by doing the differential encoding of the input binary sequence it is possible to eliminate the need of transmitter and receiver phase synchronization uh so here that uh, uh, encode the information in phase difference between successive signal transmission so the meaning of this is uh, we send a symbol zero okay we send symbol zero uh, the phase of the dpsk signal is shifted by 180 degree okay so let me say about that uh, how do we do the differential encoding okay so in a dpsk symbol 0 will be sent with 180 degree phase shift symbol 1 will be sent as it is means without any phase change okay, this is how this is the rule uh, used in dpsk okay. so let us see what is that differential encoding uh, before that let me say about the transmitter and receiver block diagram what it is see the transmitter block diagram consists of uh, uh, see here the input binary sequence which i denote uh, as bk okay the input binary sequence i will be denoting it as b 
ठीक है दैट विल बी गिवन टू द लॉजिक नेटवर्क ठीक है दिस लॉजिक नेटवर्क विल बी एक्स नॉर गेट द आउटपुट ऑफ दैट विल बी फेड बैक एज अनदर इनपुट टू दिस लॉजिक नेटवर्क थ्रू वन बिट डिले सो यर आई एम यूजिंग ए डिले एलिमेंट ओके okay so the input binary sequence i am denoting it as bk uh, that will be given to the logic network i said one input to the logic network is input binary sequence okay another input is output of the logic network delayed by one bit duration so that is that output of the logic network i denote it as dk okay so one bit delay means dk minus 1 so one input sequence is bk another input sequence is dk minus 1 So output of that will be DK. So that this this DK is XR of XR of these two, BK XR with DK minus one. Okay, then uh, uh, then BPSK modulation is done. So the next part is BPSK modulation. Uh, see this part. Uh, this part is uh, BPSK modulation. and uh, this part is that uh, differential encoding okay so what is done in uh, bpsk modulation so amplitude level shifter will be used then product modulator right so one input to the product modulator is the differential encoded data uh, another input to the product modulator is the carrier that is a root of a 2 by tv cos 2 by fct so then output of that will be the dpsk signal okay so let me say how that differential encoding is done and then i will come back to the receiver part uh, somebody have control over this remote Yeah. Uh, okay. We'll. Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. So how do I how do I generate the DPSK signal, right? Uh, so that uh, DPSK signal will be generated in uh, two steps. One is first differential encoding is done. Differential encoding of the Input binary sequence, then it is applied to the uh, phase shift key, right? So let me take one example. So my input binary sequence, that is B K, is one double zero one double zero double one. I think you can note down this sequence. <coughs> so I said it is denoted as B K. <coughs> of course, here I have written as M I, and the same. so you can denote it as bk only the information sequence that is input binary sequence as what bk i said it is 100 100 11 right so another input is what one bit delayed right and then those two are xr right or xr so here i am taking the initial bit as 1 okay initial bit either i can take initial bit as 1 or i can take it as 0 okay initial bit can be taken as either 0 or 1 so let me first consider by taking 1 so i have taken initial bit as 1 so this 1 xnar with 1 means uh, what is the output of xnar gate if they are at the same uh, if the inputs are at the same level the output will be high only right i hope it is clear so yes yeah one input is one another input is also one so input to the xnar gate is at the same level so output of that will be this one okay so i am doing xnar of these two bits i am doing xnar of these two bits okay and uh, i am getting this as my output of the dk this is my dk i am taken initial bit as one okay then this one xnar with zero one xnar with zero is zero right so i am getting next uh, as zero then uh, uh, next again zero xr with zero it is one right 
So these two will be exhaled. I hope it is clear. Then I will be getting this sequence. Right? So zero exar with zero it is one. Then one exar with one is one. Then one exar with zero is zero. Then zero exar with zero is one. Then one exar with one is one. Then one exar with one is one. So this is my differential encoded signal dk okay so that is uh, dk is equal to so this is one bit delay xnor with input sequence okay so how i said uh, how i uh, means what is the dpsk signal how i transmitting that i am transmitting symbol one with a zero degree phase shift right and symbol zero with 180 degree phase shift that is why i written for one it is zero transmitted phase right for zero it is 180 degree that is pi so wherever one is there I am transmitting with zero degree phase shift. Wherever zero symbol is there, I am transmitting that with 180 degree. So by doing so, I will be able to eliminate the need of uh, carrier phase synchronization between the transmitter and the receiver. So this is how the DPSK works. Uh, I hope it is very simple and it is most of the times they ask this question, DPSK modulation. Okay, take simple example. I said the input binary sequence I have taken uh, as uh, you can take any number of bits. I have taken two, four, six, eight bits I have taken. That is one, double zero, one, double zero, double one. And you take this as initial bit, first bit as initial bit, either one or zero. I have taken here one, then I am doing XNR operation, right? If you know XNR operation, you can write the what is the next bit. So like that I have written for all the bits, then I am saying, Symbol 1 will be transmitted with uh, 0 degree phase shift and symbol 0 will be transmitted with 180 degree phase shift. Okay, so this is done by taking initial bit as 1 now. So you do as an assignment taking initial bit as 0 and tell me what is the differentially encoded sequence and what is the phase. I think this uh, will be your uh, uh, present assignment right now. You can do it. Take the same input binary sequence take the initial bit as zero, okay? So anybody has done? Take this initial bit as zero. So zero XR with one is, I'm getting zero, right? Zero XR with one, I will be getting this as zero. Then this zero XR with zero, I will be getting this as one. Then one XR with zero, it will be zero. Then zero XR with one, it will be zero. Then zero XR with zero, it will be one. Then one XR with zero, it will be zero. Then zero XR with one, it will be zero. Zero XR with one, it will be zero. I mean, exactly, I'm getting opposite, right? So when I have taken this as zero, this will be pi. Right? So 0 XR with 1, I said it is 0. I am getting this as pi. Then 0 XR with 0, I am getting output as 1. So this will be 0. Right? I hope it is clear. So this will be pi, pi, 0. Then uh, pi, pi, 0. Then pi, pi, pi. That is the transmitted phase when the initial bit is 0. I hope you have done that. Yes, sir. Uh, please, it is a very, very simple logic. Just XNR operation, that's all. Then we need to take the initial bit either as 1 or 0. Uh, so if you do that XNR operation, then decide. I said for symbol 1, 0 degree phase shift. Symbol 0, 1 degree phase shift. That's all. Okay. So let me go back about the receiver. You can have remote uh, control also. My this one. I'm not going back. Wait. Let me pause. Oh, sorry, right. so, so I said about uh, the DPSK receiver, right? The received signal X of T is applied to the two. 
correlators that is in phase channel another one is the quadrature channel right so one input is given to the product modulator directly another input is given with one bit delay okay in the in phase channel and as well as the quadrature channel and how do we get this uh, in phase and quadrature the carrier one is cos another will be sine so that sign i will get by passing that cosine signal through minus 90 degree phase shifter so which is nothing but the Hilbert transformer right then output of these two will be summed up and call i'm calling that as variable y so that will be compared with the threshold value zero right the decision will be taken in favor of symbol one if the value of y is greater than zero and the decision will be taken in favor of symbol zero if the value of y is less than zero so this is how the so let me just have this slide so this is a summary uh, where uh, we can compare uh, uh, the average probability of error of uh, various uh, uh, digital modulation techniques see for coherent uh, psk uh, we came to know that the average probability of symbol error is root of q that is a function right q function of root of 2 ev by n naught okay for coherent FSK, it is Q root of EV by N naught. Okay. For non-coherent FSK, it is 1 by 2 E power minus EV by 2 N naught. Okay. For DPSK, for DPSK, the average probability of symbol error is 1 by 2 E power of minus EV by N naught. Okay. So between non-coherent FSK and DPSK, this is the difference. So for, for non-coherent FSK, it is 1 by 2 E power of minus ev by 2 n naught and for dpsk i am getting it is 1 by 2 e power of minus ev by n naught so what i can say is this is the probability of a bit error for dpsk so this dpsk provides a gain of 3 db over bfsk using non coherent detection for the same value of ev by n naught okay so so there are, uh, let me say about some few applications where we use these modulation techniques. Okay. So this uh, DPSK is uh, used in wireless LAN. Okay. So BPSK, I said it is used in wireless LAN, that is IEEE 802.11b. So it can provide a uh, that rate of 1 Mbps and uh, QPSK is used in so many places. One is, uh, is used in wireless LAN that is IEEE 802.11b and it can double the uh, data rate, right? So when I use BPSK, it was providing 1 Mbps. So to have 2 Mbps, I can use this QPSK. So it provides 2 Mbps, 5.5 Mbps and 11 Mbps. And uh, this QPSK was used in 3G, WDMA, and it is used in a DVBT with OFDM, and even it is used in uh, uh, 4G also. Okay, and uh, the quadrature amplitude modulation is used in most of the telephone modems, and uh, it is used in downstream of cable modems like 64 QAM, 56 QAM, and all. Uh, and even it is used in wireless local area network, IEEE. 802.11a bar g okay so there are variety of uh, wireless lan standards so for uh, wireless lan ieee 802.11a bar g this qam is used with the 60 qam for 24 mbps 36 mbps and the 64 qam it could provide a, a 38 mbps and 54 mbps i said this qam 16 qam uh, 64 qam even up to 256 qam is used in lte uh, cellular system that is 4g okay lte and as well as lte advanced and even it is continued in 5g also okay this is a frequency shift key sk is used in the cordless telephones and as well as paging system uh, so cordless telephone you are using it you no know, security guards even police are all so there uh, the FSK is used. So these are some uh, brief uh, uh, few applications of uh, various uh, digital modulation techniques. So with this, I think I can say this uh, module three is over. Okay. If possible, let me cover MSK.
that is minimum shift keying and already i said about mri fsk uh, those two topics in the coming classes so let me start uh, in the next session about uh, the module 5 that is a uh, spread spectrum communication okay so if you have any doubts you can ask about uh, any of these modulation uh, techniques which we have discussed so far now it is you know, one student has charted me saying one bit uh, adding to this dpsk will be extra i said it is not okay that is the initial bit which i am considering for uh, finding the differential coded sequence Yes, if you have any questions to ask, you can ask, you can chart. So I posted uh, almost all my PPTs and uh, uh, notes in the Google class yesterday. Okay. So no, no doubts. Hello. <coughs> Yeah, no doubts. No, sir. No, sir. Yeah, please uh, go through and uh, I will conduct one test quiz like objective type question in the next week. Okay, maybe on Monday based on these topics. So module three and as well as uh, whatever I have covered in module two that is from uh, uh, receivers, right? Maximum likelihood receiver and uh, match the filter. Okay. Is it fine? Yes, yes, sir. Yeah, please prepare because uh, we don't know till what date it will extend. So, hmm? so any difficulties you can always start. And uh, what you can do is you can use MATLAB. Okay, you can use a MATLAB. So uh, where uh, already the available code is available means uh, live script is also available about all these modulation techniques, starting from BPSK to all even 64 quam to 56 quam also, and you'll be able to see the signal constellation diagram